Welcome to the Do Show. If you are watching or streaming this episode, thank you so much for tuning in. I have a great show for you guys. All right. Now, last weekend, I came across a video that went viral on TikTok a few days after the passing of legendary gospel singer Bishop Rance Allen. Uh, take a look at this. Since then, that video has gained over a million views. People have been reposting it all over social media like crazy. And it has caught the attention of the House of Highlights, the BET Network, Steve Harvey, Kirk Franklin, John P. Key, Ja'Kalen Carr, Kevin Stage, Beyonce's mom, Tina Knowles, or Tina Knowles, we were just debating on <laughs> where her last name was. Huh? <laughs> Tina Knowles, just to name a few. He is a singer, songwriter, minister of music, elder, and inspiration to many, and so much more. He just released his newest single titled The Lamb back in September of 2020, which is available right now wherever music is sold. He is currently mm -hmm. running his own ministry called TNA Ministries. Please welcome my man, Tyler and Allen. What's up, y'all? What's up, man? What's up, man? What's happening? What's good? How you been? I'm good. I'm, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Uh, how did you get started in music? Oh, man. Um, so it all started years ago. Um, my mom, it's a total of six of us with me included on my mom's side. My mom decided one day, uh, she was like, you know, we were singing in our youth choir, and my mom was over the choir. <clears throat> and my mom said, well, our church was going through a transition. And so my family started becoming the music department. So my mom was like, well, y'all going to just travel and sing together. We had no choice. Um, I call it the Maddie Moss Clark of our family, um, like the Clark sisters. And with me, I had to sing. Like, there was no, you get an option. You had, I had to. Yeah. And so it, it pushed me in a way, it, we ain't going to say in a way, it pushed me to what I'm doing right now. Because who would have ever thought that 23 years later or a couple of years later, here I am viral, you know, known halfway, not all over the world, across the globe, you know, off, off of one little video, and that goes all the way back to my mom sitting me down, making me sing in front of big crowds, making me sing in front of churches and stuff, so she, and you know what, my mom cannot sing, my mom can't sing at all, but all my brothers and sisters, all of us can sing, well, most of us can sing. I won't lie. Most of us can sing. There is that one that we, we kicked out the group. But most of us can sing for the most part. And so, yeah, mom just had that ear. She could tell when one of us was flat. She can tell when I wasn't trying. She could tell when I was being lazy. And, you know, she, you know, the Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. And mama didn't play. Yes, so, but it helped me, though. Yes, it helped me, though, because look at what I'm doing today. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, um, we're, we're so excited for everything that's happening for you. Uh, I remember when I first found out about you, of course, like I said, it was over the weekend and my brother sent mm -hmm. me, you know, a video from this, uh, from House of Highlights. And I, I knew House yeah. of Highlights was um, like, a, like a sports company, but I didn't really pay attention to that because I'm not really a sports kind of guy. And so it mm -hmm. was interesting to see that, you know, they were posting this about, you know, you know, you and all the runs you were doing. I, mm -hmm. and, I, and I was I was saying to my brother, I was like, man, look at God. He can take somebody from that industry, from a whole different entry, and put them on Listen. different other platforms. It's rare that you find, you know, that to happen, man. And it's so amazing that, um, you know, everything that God's using you for, um, it's, it's for the glory of God. And I, I can really say, uh, you know, you, you really are more than an inspiration to a lot of people. You are helping people. You uh, yeah. are basically like uh, being a word of encouragement and you're shedding light, you know, in the midst of darkness, in the midst of mm -hmm. this pandemic, because a lot of people are really down and don't have hope. And, you know, 
it, it's crazy out here, you know. It's right. be like a whole new way of, you know, doing life. And I just wanted to ask you, you know, how has this pandemic been treating you, you know, even before this um, whole thing started with you, um, with the flip flops and you doing the yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, what's crazy is I had COVID. I am a COVID survivor. Um, God, God delivered me from it. He healed me from it. Um, as I stated, COVID nineteen has been a blessing to me. I, that's all I can say. It's been a blessing to me because who would have ever thought? That of all people, I did everything I could, you know, the mask, the social distancing, everything I could to not get it. And I still get it. And um, in those in that quarantine time, man, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I have never been isolated from people like that. I've never been cramped up in a room for 14, really more than 14 days. And, you know, you just, of course, you know, when you're spiritual, you do all of this stuff. But. Man, at that time when you when you looking at that, I had, I was scared because I couldn't breathe. One day I had to call the ambulance. I didn't know what was gonna happen. So the only thing I could do was just do what I was trained to do, and that was just pray. I prayed every day, and I would never forget. I never forget one day. One day I looked up to heaven. I told God, I said, Lord, if you would just let me get out of this, I said, if you let me get out of this, I promise you. I promise you, you won't ever have to worry about me praising you. I will pray. I will let the world know. I made a vow. I said, God, if you can bring me out of this, which I know you can, and I believe you will, I made a vow that wherever I go, whatever I do, no matter where it is, who I'm around, I will always let the world know who I serve. And so that's how it's been treating me, man. It's, it's allowed me to come into a new light of who God is to me. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, man. I, I love that. I love to hear that, man. That really yeah. does something. Man, this is one of those interviews that I, I don't do a lot of interviews like these and it's really yeah. special. I really love that um, you said yes to this. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, no problem, man. Now take me back to that day where you mm -hmm. did those Rance Island runs. Did, <laughs> <laughs> did you ever think, man, did you ever think just once, just once, that your videos would be watched by people just worldwide. Um, no. Um, first off, <clears throat> as I stated to people, I had an interview, I think last night, I was doing a radio interview, and I told her, I said, her name is Abby Knight, and I was telling her, I said, I would have never thought that that video would do what it's doing now. Let's just go to show you, you never know what God has in store for you. you know that's why you have to continue to trust him and just follow him you never know what god's going to do in your life and so like i said i mean it wasn't even an intentional thing sure i put it on tiktok and when it went down tiktok viral on tiktok i was like, okay well that's no, that's fine whatever but who would have ever thought once i put it on instagram and stuff and my boy uh his name is his father his username is at king cody on tiktok he is the real reason let me go back for a minute he is the reason for real for real that anybody even knows me on TikTok because I didn't even have a TikTok. He, what happened was three years ago, I used to stay in the dorm on the other side of my, of my uh, university. And they, all of my homeboys and my friends would come to my, my room and we would always sing. We would always chat, you know, laugh and stuff to the wee wee hours of the morning. They came over and they found we were singing. And so I, I said, let me do this. And rant to everything I heard. And when I did, they was like, yo, bro, you sound just like dude. You sound just like dude. And I was like, I mean, I've been a fan of Rance Allen since I was little. Me and my brothers used to try to Im imitate his brothers and him at my church. So that night, I said, well, y'all, let me do a little tribute to Rance Allen. Because I wanted to do a tribute. I didn't know when I was going to do it, who I was going to get. So I said, well, y'all, let me do a little something real quick. Start to see if I sound like Rance Allen. And the song we were singing wasn't even a Rance Allen tune. It was just something I just threw in there. Yeah. It's actually about the... Uh, Lamar Campbell, I think I don't think I don't think it's Campbell. It may be Campbell. It's I Love You Jesus. It's a form of a where we're now church song that every church knows. And uh, they was like, "Well, come on, brother, let's do it." I said, "All right." So I did it, and they was recording me. And so when I posted it, I posted it. I went to bed that night. I woke up the next morning. 
the world is following me. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? Like, I go from 2,000 people to, to that next day, which was a two, or that Wednesday. I went from 2,000, like, what, 10,000 people in an overnight? Yeah. And here I am, here I am, even to this day, just now checking my Instagram, I'm at 55.8K people. That same day, that Wednesday, I'm at work. A friend of mine calls me and say, bro, her friend just shared to a drunk. I said, you lying. He said, go check on Instagram. I went on Instagram and I look, I said, I just started yelling. They didn't, my coworkers didn't know what was wrong with me. They, they didn't know if I, somebody, they didn't know what was going, I just started screaming and running. And I said, bro, y'all, y'all, Kirk Franklin shared my, they was like, you lying. I said, bro, it's right here. And then Steve Harvey and then Kev on stage and Beyonce's mom, BT, House of High Nights, man, the shade room, just, man, it's just. I never thought in a million years, it was always my dream to become an artist, a world renowned artist, but never thought it would be this this soon. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, yeah. I tell people all the time, I'm like, be prepared. Be prepared. Don't Most get definitely. ready. Be prepared. Expect the Most unexpected definitely. to happen. Because anything can happen. Anything can hit. Your right. Your breakthrough could be, you know, right next door. You don't know what's right. gonna happen. You know, you know, life is different for everybody, and God puts us on, you know, this earth for a reason. And yeah, I believe that it was ordained for you that yes. day. That yes. day, like your life has changed. Like I'm telling yes. you, bro. And yes. Y'all, yes. y'all, everybody out there who has have had testimonies similar to Tyler, or you know, similar to a lot of people out here, like even Keydron Bryant. You know, I always say, mm -hmm. I'm like, man, that was ordained. That was meant to be. That wasn't any like, oh, coincidence, or that wasn't like, oh, a mistake. Right. No, that was for that day, for that time, for that moment. And yes, that was yes. right after um, what you come, uh, George Floyd. Yeah, yes, <clears throat> I, I remember it. Was, it remember it was. I remember I saw that video of him singing "I Just Want to Live," and I remember that being broadcasted everywhere right. on television. He got called to do all these shows and stuff. I mean, an incredible guy. I hope to have him on the show one day, and it's an amazing right. to you know see the growth. And you know, I even I was doing my research on you and seeing. You know, the YouTube videos of you, of course, singing and preaching in your IGTV videos. And, mm -hmm. man, you're not just putting on a face. You are for real and yeah. you're doing this from your heart. And I'm glad you're doing this from your heart because this is a gift. This is your gift. Yes. This is your ta this is yes. a talent. And you're using it. You're not using it just for you. You're using it to bless somebody else. It's, you're using Most it to definitely. encourage Most definitely. other people. And that's what I really love about, you know, people like you because... You want, and like a lot of artists and a lot of musicians that I'm grateful to hear that I have met and that I have not met. They are using their platform to encourage others and to, you know, be a light in the midst of darkness. And that's right. what we all need, especially in this time of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. I, rem I remember uh, I was on your Instagram live. I actually really love your Instagram vibes, man. I know you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your, show your talent. I love it. I, I love it. I, I've been enjoying a lot of these people singing. I mean, listen. Man. And what's funny about it? If I can interject, you don't mean to cut you off. What's funny go is ahead, go ahead. when I go live, you know me. Like I said, I'm from the south. I'm from Mobile, so I'm known in Mobile, and I'm known in certain places, <clears throat> you know. But now that the video has gone viral, I have so many young people that come to me on my Instagram, and they be like. I, I I bring them on. They'll say, "Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God!" And I'm I asked one dude. He was like, "Oh, I can't breathe." I said, "You all right?" He was like, "It's you. It's really you." And, you, and me, I'm I've never been the type to be like, "I'm better than you." You know what I'm saying? I've never been. The, I've always been taught, taught, the higher you go, the lower you go. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Humble is the way. Yeah. In due time, God exalts the humble, but He resists the proud. And so I am a firm believer that when you are humble, man, there are places that you will go that people that are qualified haven't even gone yet. Here I am, a junior, and next semester, I'll be a senior. 
in college. And I have I don't even have a degree yet. I'm studying communications for my major. And yet God is saying, OK, yeah, you're going to school to get a degree, but I'm going to use you in a totally different aspect. You won't just be on the radio trying to make money for yourself, but your, your employer won't be a nine to five. Your employer won't be working a man's job. Your employer will be purpose. Yes, yes. So to see these young people come on my live and actually say, oh, my God, I'm a big fan. Here I am saying to myself, man, you know, are you famous now? I tell people, man, that don't mean nothing to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It means nothing that I got a bunch of followers. That's I, I count it a joy. And I'm honored that God is allowing my name to be put on the front, the forefront. But at the end of the day, man, I'm still the same toddler. You know, I want to give that child a check because I was that person. I was that person that went on those knives. I didn't get my name called every night and then, but when I went on, I was nervous as heck. You know, I was that I was that person that looked up to big people. You know, I was that one. So if I can be the one to go back and say, listen, I was where you were. I see potential. Let me try to bring you along as well. While I'm trying to build my name, that's all that matters, man. It's not about I got mine, you get yours. We got to go back and learn to pull each other up. And if I can go back and get those young people and say, listen, I know people have told you you can't, but I'm the one that's going to tell you you will. And you never know. That one I love you, that one encouragement will take a person a long way. So if, just imagine a bunch of people that have been on my life. If I can be there to be like, I got you. Just imagine what that does for that one person. You never know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. So, And I, I really love that you said that because I was just talking about that couple episodes before because of course i'm not part of a management company or agency i didn't Mm -hmm. grow up being a part of that and you know i meant to tell you even before i started taping for the show that i started this show just because i wanted to be a light i wanted to give hope to people who don't have hope and i started this right Right. when uh covid19 had hit and this was um, in June. I got the idea, you know, in uh, May, I believe, yeah, mm-hmm. at the end of May. And and the, the show didn't manifest until June of this year. And I'm so glad that it did. And I will say that I never knew that I was going mm-hmm. to do the things that I am doing. And, of course, meet the people that I have been meeting. And I'm not trying to brag or anything because mm-hmm. it's not about bragging. It's about right. It's about giving encouragement. It's about you know entertaining people. For me, that's entertaining. That's you know presenting my music to a bunch of record executives and to a bunch of people and you know the audience and you know for them to you know dance and enjoy and buy and you know go right. see me in concert. And I just want to. Give Give. It's um, for me. Right. It's about giving. I know for you, it's about giving. And I, I right. can say for you, man, it, you really are one of those people, one of those artists that you know. I would even love. I would really love to go and see in concert. I know that's gonna happen. Oh I wow! That's gonna happen. I really. If you come down here uh, to the DMV, just let me know because we got. I, I, yeah, I, I man. Gotta see you, man. It's, it's gonna be an yeah, incredible. man. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I, I really love um, <clears throat> love your voice and your 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 range and how you take it to a whole nother level. I mean, you've grown, man, for real. I mean, so God, yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it's incredible. I, I tell you, I don't sing. Yeah. I don't rap. As you can see, I got drums behind me, so I'm a musician myself. I'm. I, yeah, I, I'm a gospel musician. Actually, I grew up listening mm-hmm. to Israel Holton, Ty Tribbett, Kirk Franklin, Clark Sisters. You feel me? Byron yes. Gates, Smoke yes. Norfolk. Yes, all those people, man. I mean, it's a list. Vashawn Mitchell. Uh, you know, it's a whole bunch. I I love. I really do, did grow up listening to a lot of uh, Israel Newbury. That was like, yeah, home, man, like. All those records from 2000 all the way to even now. And uh, I, I'm glad that you are so open minded to even the genres that you and, and songs that you even play and uh, sing. Because mm-hmm. I've seen that not only do you just sing gospel music, but you actually do other covers. And you not only covers, mm-hmm. but you just, you know, create your own original songs and you're trying to, you know, make your sound um, known. And I'm glad I, there was a guy, I forget his name, but um, 
it was this um this 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 guy that you were singing with um he did a a, a Justin Bieber co cover of Lonely and another cover of uh, I think Shawn Mendes I believe and man his I, I remember you guys were singing together I believe it was last night uh, I mm -hmm. saw that and you guys sounded amazing together I I wish I I, I wish I knew his name because I was like man he could sing like that yeah. Yeah. Are are you saying last night? I believe it was if it if it, it wasn't was the, last night, it was the night before or maybe it, it He had on a gray sweatshirt and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, that's my homeboy Grant Bias. He's yeah, from yeah, Arkansas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that guy. Grant Grant is one of the most he me and Grant became real cool. Okay, so as as most people don't know, we actually just sing in this ensemble at our at our institution. It's called the Voices of Mobile. And over three years ago, I went viral for the first time in the Voice of Mobile singing the song Happy by Kirk Franklin. That's at 12.6 million views right now. Okay, and Kirk Franklin shared that one. And so Grant comes, he came in the next year, which was 2017. And when I heard Grant sing, I said, I ain't never heard. Of well, there was one guy named Parker Powell, it was him too. But when I heard Grant, me and Grant became real, real cool. I said, bro, I ain't never heard nobody sing just like a black soulful person yeah. like this is insane bro. i said bro some of the stuff i do and even more stuff i can't do this dude does you know like grant is a grant is a whole nother category bro but the thing about it is when me and grant sing we sync so good together brother and literally we will do the same runs without even trying so you know that grant grant is grant is phenomenal as well man I, when i tell you he just man He's a singing boy. That's all I can say, man. That's a singing man right there, bro. I'm telling you. For sure, for sure. I, I, man, man, I heard uh, a show on NBC reached out to you. I don't know if I'm able to talk about this. Let me know. We can cut this out. <laughs> you good. <laughs> but, um, you good. I know our show on NBC reached out to you. Talk about that for a sec. Well, actually, I was in a um, junior project. And I, in our music department, at our school, we have praise and worship leadership majors. And so for them to graduate, they have to throw on projects or worship nights as if they were already in a church on how they would handle a praise team, how they would run a service and stuff like that. One of my closest friends, her name is Raven Young. She had a um, worship night, and so I had to sing. And so one of my best friends named Austin Perkins from Ellensville, Mississippi, his mom calls me and says, uh... You know you on the internet, right? I said, no. She sent me the link, and I said, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's like, dang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so I was just like, oh, bro, this is crazy. And it's like, let me tell you this, man. Every day since last, it, yesterday made a week since the video went viral. Every day since last Tuesday, I every day I wake up, it's something. And God spoke to me one day, I think it was Sunday. No, it was either yesterday or the day before yesterday. He spoke to me and he said, just go to sleep and wake up. He said, every time you wake up, Something else gonna happen. I said, I said, hold on, man. I said, what do you mean? Now that, 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 that's 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 all. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. I, uh, I said, what? He said, go to bed and just wake up. Yes. And every yes. time, and listen, I woke up that last that Tuesday, that Wednesday. Kirk Franklin had shared it. I woke up that Thursday. Drake had shared it. And in the time of waking up. All of these different platforms have shared it. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, um, which you, John P. Key reached out to me, uh, supposed to be working with him. I mean, just so many people. When I say I've been waking up to just more and more and more, because the, the enemy got to me Sunday morning. I said, well, Lord, maybe this is just a momentary, you know, momentary thing, you know, just something for the moment. And the Lord spoke to me and said, no, 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 no. I want you to repeat after me. I said, okay. This is exactly what I repeated. He said, I will not work 
a job from hour to hour. I will not have to struggle for check day to day. I will not work a nine to five. I will not work a seven to 10 or seven to four. He said, your employer is purpose. I'm repeating all of this now. I'm, I'm, even though I'm feeling a certain type of way, my faith began to speak for me. I began to say, repeating after God, I said, I will travel. I will reach the nations. I will reach millions. I will minister to the masses. I will preach in places I've only dreamed of. I will minister before people I've, I've only seen on TV. I will connect with people that I've only, I never thought I would talk to, you know, face to face on the phone. You know what I'm saying? And after I said all of that, boom, here comes another wave. The Lord speaks to me and says, there's another wave coming. And you got to be ready for what you're getting ready to experience. Because what's getting ready to happen, you ain't even, your eyes and your mind ain't even going to be able to, to process it. Like, I've been trying to process everything going on. It's like, every time I think nothing else could happen in this moment, boom, something else come up. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> but... That's how my God works, man. When you're faithful, when you are faithful, man, he does stuff like that, bro. That's how he is, man. I love him for it. I love him for it. For sure, for sure. Yeah. You, For some reason, my audio is not working, bro. My audio just went out. Okay. You, you just... Can you okay. say something while I fix it, just so I can hear, see? Okay, then. Okay. Well, um... We're back. <laughs> well, hey, you know what's funny? What's cr And then what's crazy is, the fact of the matter was, I would have never thought, I would have never thought, I would have never thought that somebody that has supported, I, I support everybody, I try to support everybody, I try to push everybody on. And I used to always say to myself, well, Lord, you know, when is my time going to come? And I got prophetic words. I got people that prophesied to me and told me things. And I used to say to myself, I said, you know, I'm just going to be patient. And all of a sudden, here God said, here's your time. Yes. And guess what? Nobody, I've had critics already. I thank you. I want to say this. If they, if they watch it, when they watch this, I don't care. I want to say this on God. Thank you to all of you that said and that are continuing to say he ain't ransacked out because you know what? You're right. I never will be ransacked out. And I never tried to be ransacked out. The thing that I did was use the gift God gave and the talent God gave me to pay tribute to a legend that is it's a legend in his own right and will never be replaced. Yeah. So thank you for saying things like he can't be ransacked out. He'll never be ransacked out. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so very much. It does my heart joy. Because you don't do nothing, but you motivate me. You push me to my next level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, I thank God for it, man. That's all I can say. Yeah, man. To God be the glory, man. That's all I can say. Yeah, you're your own individual artist. You're your own sound. Everybody's unique in their own way. That's what makes you special. Most definitely. Uh, you now, your newest release, The Lamb, uh, is available right now. You guys should really go get that single. Uh, what was yeah. The, what was the significance behind that whole uh project um so to have a transparent moment um school and me are not best friends me and school do not get along mm -mm. uh being in college is totally different from anything you know 17 hours a semester you know what i'm saying traveling you know it's just it's a lot to to process you really have to prioritize yourself and so you know in that time i was going through a lot in school, um, had gone through some deaths, uh, and I don't do well with death at all. And so, you know, it just a lot was going on. And, you know, I told God, I said, Lord, I don't want to have to remake anybody's song. I told God, I said, I really want to write my own song. I don't want to have to redo or rearrange somebody else's. And uh, all of a sudden, I was in the shower crying out to the Lord. And the Lord wrote that game, those lyrics just came to my head. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Holy is your name till we give the praise. Holy is the Lamb of, of God. And so I got with some friends too. 
make my music. And then I hooked up with one of my brothers from Huntsville. His name is Brandon Pear. He got my music together. He did my background vocals. I went up to Huntsville to record it. And I released it. And man, to see the testimonies I've gotten behind that song. One lady said she was going to commit suicide and she heard that song. And it changed her life. One, one man told me he hasn't been to church. One lady told me she hasn't been to church in years. She heard that song. She went to church Sunday. You know what I'm saying? So God knew my pain. Somebody who would ever not thought my pain would be somebody else's deliverance. Come on now. Who would ever thought that my crying would be the bridge to bring somebody else from drowning? It was the way to bring them back to shore. Yeah. The tears that I cried went out. That wave of tears went out to those people. And they're going out to people that are lost in, at sea right. and bringing them to shore. So it's blessing it's blessing everyone, man. I, I just thank God for it. Yeah. Man, that's incredible. Wow. That, that, yeah. That's incredible. That's more than incredible. It's unexplainable. Wow. Yeah, man. I, I, man. God is good, bro. He, re he really is. He, you know, he can. You know, he, he he can do anything. He really can. Yes, anything. Really, like beyond what you know we ask or think. You know, it, he really is real. He really is right yeah. there. He's always right there. I always have to remind myself, God's always right there, and He's always using you and. I do, I didn't even know we were going to go into this, man, but I got to tell you, man, like, it's been rough way yeah. before this uh, COVID-19, because I've been in a bitter state, I've been in a state of mind where I've been bitter and angry, and I'm recovering from that right now, and I'm like, and I remember all hell had broke loose the day after I had started 11th grade, and... I was supposed to go see Bishop T.D. Jakes at the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, and that didn't happen. I was in, I was sick, but one of my mentors, shout out to Jonathan, was on drums, and he has trained me ever since I was third grade on the drums. And I was down, and then when I came back, I didn't get all the respect that you know I, I should have mm -hmm. gotten, and it was it was rough. And then I had people against me, and I was honestly. I'm, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm not telling this story just to say, oh, I was a good person. No, I was angry and bitter and sad yeah. and depressed, yeah. and I could have ended up in the hospital too. So I'm going to tell y'all, I'm not just trying to make myself look good because sometimes when we tell stories of what happened, we make ourselves look good. But I'm here to tell you today, Most definitely. I was angry, I was bitter, I was depressed, I didn't feel good, I didn't want to do anything, I didn't want to talk to anybody. The mask that I was putting on was the problem. And if the coronavirus didn't hit, none of this show None of this would have had happened at all. I would not be talking to you right now. I wouldn't have had the pleasure of talking to you right now, Tyler. And I, but I wanted to, um, I'm going to say this um, next episode because I'm going to do a part two of a segment that I, I did uh, earlier on. Uh, I, I really want to know because I was telling my man David, I'm like, now, when is that answer prayer going to happen for me? And I know what I want, and I don't want to hear what people say when they tell me, you should do this, you should go in this direction. Because when someone tells you, you can do whatever you want, and this is something that a lot of people um, love when I said this on my Instagram, I reposted on my Instagram, when someone mm -hmm. tells you, oh, you can do whatever you want, and then they go tell you what you should do, I'm like, well, what you, mm -hmm. what you saying? You're contradicting yourself. The truth of the matter is, I don't need to hear anybody's voices. Tune out your tune out them voices and find your voice. And right, if you, and especially because you're doing the work, especially because you're the one going to college, you're the one manifesting, you're the one putting all that blood, sweat, and tears. You feel me? Don't listen to them outside noise and and don't let them put God in the in the. 
situation mm-hmm. because I've, I'm, I, I have a lot, uh, too many people doing that right now who, right. who are Christians and they're like, well, God showed me in a dream. I can't stand yeah. people like that. I really can't. Hey, let me say, if you don't mind, let me say this just to, because I agree with you on that. If you're not careful, people will manipulate you spiritually and will make you think that, because this is my thing. Prophecy does two things. It confirms or it reveals. So I'm very careful people come to me and say, God said, God said, God, because God can talk to me just like he talked to you. Oh, come on, somebody. Thank you. Yeah. You know, and yeah. certain people will try to guide you out of things. And I'm going to say this. They will try to God. Let me say it this way. Lowercase g, not the big one, the lowercase g, God you out by putting themselves as God and trying to talk you out of something that they don't want you to do. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have a strong prayer life, if you don't have a strong foundation and a strong word life, a fasting life, you will think that what people are saying is really God speaking to you, and you will ruin your life by listening to people. And in this in this moment of me doing um my live and not my life, my, my this this fame that God is allowing to come upon me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had people come to me. God, okay, so you get that gets to you. But when you when you when you when you're raised in a strong foundation, and I was raised holiness, you know what I'm saying? I, I was raised, I was taught the, the the weapons of prayer, how 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 to use it. I was taught how to communicate with God, how to fast and get your I was taught all of that. So I have that strong foundation. No, I don't know everything. But I know, know when the devil is coming at me and I know when it's God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know enough to know when it's a snake and I can smell a rat a mile away. Yeah. So, you know, you just got to be very mindful of that. People, are, they are very selfish. And people really will try to out talk you out of stuff that God had told you to do. Because whether you know it or not, let me say this. If you know, you want to know when it's God. Anytime God tells you to do something, not only are people going to go against it, but half of the time, you ain't going to want to do it yourself. It's going to be very uncomfortable. That's how you know it's a God thing. That's one thing I've learned. When I know God is really telling me to do something, I don't be want to do it myself. Because first of all, I'm the type of person, I'm a visual person. I like to know what's going to happen. When I'm, a, I'm a detailed person. Tell me all that. I don't like to be getting into the dark. You know what I'm saying? That's the same way so, for me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the way God works, he doesn't tell us every detail. In the journey, on the journey, because God know time enough that if I find out that so and so gonna say this to me, or so and so gonna trade betray me like this, time ain't going. So what he gotta do? He gotta lead you blindsided, because see, he know you're trying to put your will in, and see, it can't be your will, because see, if he tell you everything, you'll ruin yourself. Yeah. So what he gotta do? You, this is a faith walk. You've got to trust him. Even when it feels like you can't trace him. You got to know he's there. The Bible says, "When I, if I make my bed in hell, behold, he's there. If I go to the uttermost part of the world, he's there. So just because I'm on the corner of the street, besides being in the church, I don't mean God isn't there with me on the corner of that street. You still got to trust the man. So you just got to be mindful. Make sure you... you, you when you're praying, when you're fasting, and when you're reading and, and continuing consistently communicating with God and being persistent in your spiritual life with the Lord, you'll begin to hear his voice out of everybody else's. You'll know his voice out of everybody else's. And that's the thing. We got too many people that talking. We don't know when it's really God and when it's really man. So, yeah. You got, you got, I tell people all the time, be very mindful when people come at you with their God said. He'll tell you too. Yeah. And that's what I'm yeah. waiting for. I'm waiting for him to tell me. And I don't want people to. And I've heard this so many times. And people say, well, God speaks through this way. Don't tell me how God speaks mm-hmm. to me. God speaks to everybody, you know, differently. And you're telling me. Right. You might. You as an individual might be telling me a way that he speaks to you, not the way he speaks to me. And ultimately, right. you don't know how he speaks to me. So don't put that on me. And I. You know, mm-hmm. I'm so glad you that you said that, man, because that's an that's an encouragement for me. That's one of the things that I'm gonna, you know, just grab it, put it in my pocket, and carry it with me because I really need most that. definitely. Because most I, definitely, I, I'm in a position now where I am. I know what I want to do. 
I'm heading in the direction. I'm, yeah. inde I'm independent. I want to be independent. It's like when you know what you want to do, because not a lot of people my age know what they want to do for life. But when you know and you found out yeah. your gift and your talent and you're good at it and it comes as natural, you can't, you can't say nothing. That's it. You really can't That's say it. it. That's Man. it. But before I let you go, uh, what can you say to people out there uh, who are trying to find hope during these uncertain times? Because like I said earlier, this it really seems like there's going to be a whole new way of living life. And yeah. people are just... Uh, well, the thing that I would tell people is wear the mask, but don't let the mask be masky. Let me say it this way. Wear the mask. But don't let it wear you. Don't don't let the mask control you. I said that word. There you go. That's proper English. <laughs> wear the mask, but don't let the mask control you. A lot of people have allowed the mask to muzzle their their their, their way of who they are. You know, the pandemic to me is a distraction. It's a distraction to get people's mind on. Oh my God, everybody dying from this. And, and, and I have so much sympathy for people that are packed. Because I have people, you know, in, in, in the Church of God in Christ, dear people, bishops and, and, and mothers that have passed on, that were mentors. You know, I've had people in real life that I would close to that pastor. So I, don't get me wrong when I say, I'm just saying, well, I don't care about it. I do. And I'm telling you to practice and be cautious, be, be cautious of everything. But it's a distraction, especially into the church. Because the pandemic has really shown. Who has a relationship with the building? And who has a relationship with the Savior? And that's why when you get off a live, church Facebook live, you say, I, I just need something. I, that, I just got to go back in the building. See what it is? It ain't so much that God meet you in the building. Your, your life is connected to that, to that, to that brick building. But the, 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 man, the, the, the spirit that, that abides in us, that should abide in us when we need that building, you don't have no connection with him. As I would say, you have a shortage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I would encourage everybody, this pandemic is really not just for the church to just, it is what it is. No, this pandemic is for, God allowed this to happen, I believe, one of the reasons, was to show us that, look, now you don't have to worry about having no excuse. Everybody was so busy, I got to go to work, I got to do this. Now that God allowed, allowed, he allowed a lot of us to get laid off, he allowed a lot of us, we had to stay at home, so what 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 is your excuse for not getting that relationship with him? You have more time on your hand now. You know, you have more time to do it actually what you wanted to do. You wanted to start that business. This is the perfect time to do it. Yeah. The way God released money this year was crazy. I ain't never seen money come to me the more said it has this year. You know, God is like, that's why I started my TNA business, my ministry with that. I'm submitted under my church bishop. My bishop is Bishop Ellis Harper, Ark of Safety Church in Mobile. And though I have my own ministry, I don't let that ministry override my leader. And even in that, I've allowed this pandemic to not control me, but to put me in a whole other place with God. I've gotten to know God on a deeper level. And I would tell people in this pandemic, don't, uh, don't allow the distractions and the things of this world to distract you from, knowing who God, from, from you knowing who God is. Get to know him, man. Seek him. Follow up with him. Let him prune you. Let him work on you. Let him speak to you. Let him develop you. And guess what? You never, because you never know. Don't, and let me say this. Don't give up either. Don't give up on your dream, man. I, I wanted to give up. What's crazy? I told a close friend of mine. She's really dear to my heart. Her name is Deja Harper. I told her, I said, I, I don't want to. I don't want to do this anymore. And she told me, she, you know, you always got that one friend that don't never let you wallow in your mess. She told me, she said, okay, Ann, you got to do this. You got people that's, that's they need to hear you. I was like, man, don't nobody need to hear me, man. I don't, and I was going to give up on it. I was like, I'm tired of trying to put myself out there. And that was the problem. Key word, key, sent, key, key phrase. I was putting myself out there. Yeah. But when I just gave up and I said, you know what, Lord, your will be done. Here I am, almost a million views later, all around the world. If I had a gave up, I wouldn't be on this show right now. Oh, God. So, keep trusting God, people. 
keep trusting God is what I tell you. Keep trusting God. All is going to be, everything is going to be all right. Yeah. God is going to take care of his people. Yes, sir. I've seen it happen. Yes, sir. So, yes, that's sir. my word. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for stopping Thank by. You. I really love talking to you and going in depth in this conversation. I really love you, man. Man, come back on the show whenever. We're going to get a whole new studio and all this. You got to come Oh, back, yeah. Man. Yeah. His newest release titled The Lamb is available right now wherever music is sold. All right, guys, make sure to check out his website at www.tnaministries.com. Dot org. My time's up. We'll be right back, folks. No. That's all the time that I have for today. I would like to thank my man Tyler and Alan for coming on the show. If you would like to view clips from today's show, just head on over to Adu's YouTube channel for more exclusive content. That's me. Also, if you want to stream full episodes, head on over to castbox.fm or anchor.fm. Both are available for download on the Google Play Store and App Store. And finally, make sure to tune in to the Do Show. That's my show! Only on YouTube.com. Stay cool, live life, stay safe, stay secure. <laughs>